So let's start with alimentary lymphoma. My group at the University of Sydney uh, published some information last year about a specific type of lymphoma in cats, low-grade alimentary lymphoma or small cell lymphoma. We did a survey of cats presenting to three general practices in Australia, in Sydney, Melbourne and uh, Brisbane, in fact. And uh, we found that 30% of cats with alimentary lymphoma had small cell lymphoma. Are you diagnosing a third of your feline alimentary lymphoma patients with the low-grade form of disease? This has implications for treatment and for prognosis. The median survival time for these cats is two years with oral chemotherapy alone. And specifically in this talk, I'll be talking about how to definitively diagnose the small cell type of lymphoma and how to recognise it from other enteropathies. And along the way, we'll, we'll cover other enteropathies such as inflammatory bowel disease, food allergy, and that uh, underdiagnosed disease, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. Another key topic that I'll be talking about is fungal infections in cats. I'll specifically be talking about feline aspergillosis. This is an area that we have much expertise in. Last year I discovered a new species of fungus that causes this disease in cats. And here in Australia, we've seen the most cases in the world. In fact, this disease was only described in 1980, but there are many cases that have been described now, and most of them have been described in the last five years. So I'll be talking about how to recognise this disease, how to diagnose it, and how to treat it. And I'll also be talking about the different forms of infection, sinonasal infection and sinoorbital infection. We won't just stick to aspergillosis, we'll look at other fungal infections that, that we're likely to encounter in practice. Cryptococcosis, what's new, how do we treat it, how do we diagnose it, and some of these funny feline uh, fungal infections such as sporotrichosis and also these black pigmented fungal infections. How do we recognise these infections? How do we tell them apart from other infectious diseases? Because most of these infections, these fungal infections that we'll be concentrating on, affect the respiratory tract.